Hi everyone, and welcome to the history of fashion. Today we're gonna to talk about a piece of utilitarian clothing with murky beginnings. What started out as a protective garment for workers and slaves, then became a symbol of the civil rights movement, and finally became a bold fashion statement in the 90s. Today we're gonna to look at the history of overalls. Overalls are a garment consisting of trousers with a front flap over the chest, held up by straps over the shoulders. They're typically made of sturdy material and worn especially as casual or working clothes. So this video, I'm going to break up into a couple different categories, going through the history of overalls, uh, mainly in the West. So we're going to start out in Britain. The origins of overalls are murky at best. Several sources I was able to find suggested that the classic bib overall was around by the time America was founded in 1776. However, tracing it back further than this is much more challenging and involves some guesswork. So to start with, it's important to know that the common British term for North American overalls is dungarees. Dungaree originally referred to a heavy, durable fabric imported from an Indian town known as Dongri in the late 16th century. So they got this fabric from Dongri, they basically just called the fabric that because they were like, lazy I guess, <laughs> and um, Dongri was anglicized to dungaree, and that's what the British knew this fabric as. So the British also used the word dungaree to describe selge de Nîmes, another fabric from the same era, this one from France. Selge de Nîmes is now known as denim, or at least an early version of it. During this time, clothes made from either type of dungaree fabric were regarded as rough work clothes worn by those in low social classes. While the word dungarees wouldn't refer to bib overalls for a few centuries, it isn't a stretch to imagine that sometime in between the early 1600s to the late 1700s, the first pair of bib overalls were created in Britain, likely from dungaree or denim fabric. And that would kind of explain the name they would later be given. What, when we first hear about them in writing and stuff, it seems like they're already sort of a well-known fabric, like they're not explained, they're just referenced. So uh, it's not a huge stretch to think that they'd been around for some time before they came to America. So uh, in the late 1700s, America was like officially founded. So this is when uh, overalls moved over to America and we can kind of better trace the history. As previously mentioned, the first references to overalls that we see in literature date back to the late 18th century. These early writings imply that overalls were a protective garment worn primarily by slaves, sharecroppers, and those in the military. It's also clear that they were seen as a symbol of very low social status in everyday wear. Despite the stigma attached to them, their utility eventually was too great to be ignored. Over the following decades, overalls spread in popularity among the working class. Alongside this, several improvements were made. First, darts were added. These are strategic tucks or folds to help provide shape to a garment. Additionally, custom tool pockets were added. Uh, these would be for like pens, rulers, and other tools, basically. All this combined made them a great piece of clothing for the working class. By the year 1850, overalls were being advertised and sold in catalogs as a perfect garment for working class men in any field. Also around this time, different colors came to signify a person's trade. Well, at first, most people wore white overalls because they could easily be bleached if they got dirty. By the mid 19th century, painters were wearing white, Farmers were wearing blue or brown, and railway workers wore various pinstripes. In the late 1910s to early 1920s, overalls were briefly put into the spotlight as overall clubs cropped up around America. These clubs were in protest of the widespread profiteering going on in the clothing industry. While this isn't a particularly well-known and it wasn't super effective or long-lived at the time even, it was perhaps the first time that overalls were used as a symbol of protest, and it would not be the last. Also around this time, as women took to manual labor while men went to war, women started donning work clothes, including overalls. So from the late 20s to the early 60s, overalls were primarily still worn by farmers and manual laborers. They did have occasional moments in the spotlight. You can find some catalogs of this sort of stuff, but they still had carried that negative social stigma. Overalls played a decently big role in the civil rights movement. Their purpose during this time was threefold. Firstly, they were worn as a practical garment. Uh, as we all know, denim is a very durable fabric. It could basically withstand the uh, brutal uh, crowd control methods that uh, police used on protesters during this time. So these included attack dogs and high pressure hoses that would kind of rip through other clothing, basically. So people started wearing overalls just to protect their normal clothes. I mean, fucked up, but fair enough. <laughs> 
So secondly, they were a reference to the sharecroppers and slaves who first wore them. This is basically because they were still seen as a garment for lower societal classes and they still carried their negative stigma. It was kind of a commentary on how little progress had been achieved. So the third and final reason they were kind of used during this period was to help bridge the gap between the younger city dwelling members of the civil rights movement and those living in the South. Black Americans living in the South were subjected to arguably the worst abuse in the country at this time. This was at no fault of their own. I have a great quote here from Marlon Comar in her article, What the Civil Rights Movement Has to Do with Denim. To register to vote as a black person was to risk losing your job, or worse, your life, by inviting the Ku Klux Klan to your backyard. Overalls and other denim clothing helped to spread the message of a new era for civil rights to Southerners. In some ways, they helped to form unity between black Americans across the country. Up until this point, overalls had been used primarily as a tool. First, for production and utility, and then as a symbol of oppression. However, overalls would soon be thrust into the world of mainstream fashion. Beginning in the late 1980s, but mostly in the 90s, the hip hop scene embraced baggy overalls as part of their signature look. This, paired with other bold pieces worn by the community, helped push the larger than life, in your face attitude of many of the stars of the scene. Uh, this is really when overalls changed from being strictly a utilitarian garment to being a bold mainstream fashion piece. It's interesting to reflect on their history with this in mind. Originally a symbol of the lowest social status, they had now been transformed to an iconic element of mainstream fashion by the very communities that were first wearing them and were judged for wearing this low class garment. Overalls probably reached their peak popularity in this time, the mid to late 90s, but their meaning had been changed permanently. Today, they've seen a huge resurgence in popularity alongside many of the styles of the 90s. Personally, I doubt they'll ever reach the popularity of their cousin jeans. Jeans were originally called waist overalls, but that's for another episode. Uh, I don't doubt we'll see overalls fade in and out of mainstream fashion for years into the future. Thanks for watching this episode on the history of overalls. I really enjoyed researching this one and I learned a lot about more than just overalls. I hope you enjoyed it as well. Please like, share, and subscribe if you have the time. I would really appreciate it. What would you like to hear me talk about next time? I've got a few awesome suggestions and I would love to hear more. Thanks everyone, and I will talk to you soon.